sentenced on the way down Hannon Road, um, and I didn't get arrested, uh, 65 and a 40, um, <laughs> okay. that uh, just in the last two days that the grapes have pushed out a lot. They, oh, really? They, yeah, I just noticed on the way down because, you know, where my house is is just grapes everywhere. Uh, and in the fall, you can smell grapes from sure. your bedroom sure. uh and yeah they've they've just started to emerge very quickly and it's not the only thing so now we're starting to shift gears with this temperature from the early spring material your forsythia the bright yellow that signify the beginning of spring are starting to fall by the way and i'm seeing some of the very early cherry start to blow petals across the road as yeah. we're driving so now we're starting to come into the what you'd call late spring early summer i believe it or not uh in erie early summer is usually not till uh, mid-august yeah, it, feel, like it that. feels that well i was going to ask about the grapes because last week we were talking about some crops that you know because of our really shaky start to the year weren't going to do well uh and i wondered how the grapes would do but apparently this week just woke them up yeah i don't think there's going to be any negative to the grapes it's when they get to the point where they are now and then we get a hard white frost that, okay. that knocks them off that's when the issue i did hear from some farmers that they're really nervous or struggling or lost on the on the peach crop in on certain spots uh because they're in early bloom right um but uh, the the later stuff that's emerging i think i think should be fine i'm not a field fruit farmer and i'm sure there's others that have their finger on the pulse better mm -hmm. than i do that being said what i've been spending the evenings doing in in my uh, horticultural therapy is potting bare root it's still in our cooler i have 200 right. fraser firs we're starting to grow uh, some of our own christmas trees because they are so few and far between in the market if, if mm -hmm. you don't know about supply and demand of the green industry the Fraser fir is is, I mean, as far as commercially uh, nearing extinction because the, in the Indiana area that was the mecca of Christmas trees forever, some of the family farms haven't progressed. Some of the uh, farms that are still doing it only mm -hmm. have so many trees. I mean, it takes between seven and eleven years depending on the size that you want for the tree, and they can't just wiggle their nose and, and right. come up with that. And right. some of the farms are 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 using the land that they have. That's what they're 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 utilizing. So our relationship with like Berkey Farms is fantastic down in Sagertown area um, or Spartanburg area. Sorry, but the uh, they, they can only do so much. They the last year um, uh, Melissa from Cat, uh, from Berkey said they turned away a quarter million trees. Is that right? In orders, yeah. Wow. Like, so uh, they weren't bringing trees in from Canada as much as they were. So um, some of the solution to that, whether it be in my era or my daughter's era is uh, to go ahead. We have 60 acres that are open to plant, so we're mm -hmm. going to start planting some trees. I have 200 of them to get in, uh, so we're, we're pretty busy. Well, yeah, you are busy, and of course you were busy for Mother's Day weekend. Uh, how'd that all go? We are catching up. Last year was the biggest year in Stan's history by far. Like, uh, you, you know, the whole phenomenon of COVID has really changed the green industry across the country, mm -hmm. not just here in Erie. It's kind of um, sparked the younger generation, kind of reinstilled our age. You know, uh, what is that, Alan? Middle age? Just past yeah, middle I, age. I guess. I, I uh, shudder to think at this point. It's kind of reinvigorated. Older some, than the way is older what we than, call. Older yeah. than the young adult. Yes. I, I was at four o'clock this morning. Morning, starting to sip my coffee and just doing a little surfing through Netflix and I saw this show come up I'm like oh that's kind of interesting I was just reading the highlights and it said YA one of the best YA oh, sci-fis and I was like YA YA oh young adult that's yeah. probably like the 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 divergent and and the the, um, the young adult books and so right. a lot of the dystopian the, the... so let me just say i skipped that because i'm not okay. a young adult anymore so not until not until ya stands for you are aged <laughs> <laughs> you're aging <laughs> you're aging sci-fi special um but the now look um uh, in my sleep deprivation i forgot what i was talking about Oh, uh, Mother's Day and, and stands. Oh, and yeah. So that, that, that has went. changed everything as far as the green industry. So we have prepared this year like uh, to, to satisfy a, a interest like we had last mm -hmm. year. And it's almost literally – I know the staff would agree and be nodding if they were sitting next to me uh, that it, it's it's almost too much. We, yeah. we still have material that's not gotten transplanted because we just we, – we can't keep up. But that being said – 
April was very, very uh, wet and cold compared to last year. Mm -hmm. So we had a little bit of a backup. Nothing left. Nothing got a home. Everybody's kind of waiting uh, for the for the tide to turn in the weather, and now everything's leaving really quickly. Right. So you're going to find some empty benches and stuff because, quite frankly, we just can't keep up, uh, and we have uh, about 80 staff. So it's yeah. it's it's just uh, impossible to move as fast as it's going out the door. Yeah. So if you don't find it today, uh, come back tomorrow morning, and probably overnight it got put back on the bench because there is a lot more. I, I hear a lot when they come to Stands East. Uh, oh, wow, I had no idea what was here. And I always kind of tease. I'm like, well, this is just the display room. Uh, you right. know, this is just the showroom. You should see what's behind here. So it takes takes a lot of effort and a lot of man hours and power to get it all moved up where into the showroom. So what's going on this year is Mother's Day was a huge success. We had a, a banner year of weather. It snowed a little last Mother's Day. Mm. So sales are really good because we had a lot of penned-up ambition for things maybe not even mom-related. But, um, of course, everything is mom related but, yeah it is uh in we, the end. we uh, had a fantastic uh, weekend and it carried right through with the weather which is made up for and catching up to what was lost in garden time right. and sales and and product and such in april due to you know the, the really wet and kind of dreary mm-hmm. start which you know was probably um for the fruit farmers and like we discussed a little bit more normal and typical for sure. what we should see in Erie. So, you know, and, and from the business perspective, watching what is leaving and, you know, what where the numbers are and such compared to last year, we're on track to catch up to okay. last year right now. Well, that's good. But I have to assume, though, that with a week like this, we you know, we were, we, we've talked in the past few weeks about people sort of jumping the gun. Um, but a week like this, you have to have people going, OK, I'm ready now. This is it. I woke up. You know, Alan, Let's that's, plant. that's a fantastic topic because that's what I'm getting kind of clubbed over the head with every time, it, you know, if I'm, whether I'm stocking a bench or whether I'm mm-hmm. going from my office to the phone or whatever, someone will stop me and go, so can I? And, and you know, yeah. that like, and there's it? nothing more I want is than to have the local gardening public to have their confidence in me that I really genuinely care that their hobby and their right. outdoor spaces and stuff thrive and want to just just flood information with whatever I can. That's why we're on the show. I really, truly um, have devoted my life to this industry. Mm-hmm. But if I had the ability to tell you what the rest of May's weather was like in Erie, exactly. I probably would be um, with a Mai Tai and my feet up on an island sure. somewhere counting my millions. Thinking because, about buying Twitter, maybe. Yeah, because I I could only venture a wild guess as to what the weather is going to yield. I watch on my phone the Weatherbug. Weatherbug app mm-hmm. has been very good to me over the years. It's been very accurate, very um, you know long-term successful at predicting. And um, the... 12 day forecast looks phenomenal. I see like a 49, 149 in the 12 day forecast. Which is okay. Which is okay. It's not going to harm anything, especially if it's kind of been in the ground for a week. It's mm-hmm. kind of seen 52 and 54 at night. So I have uh, just a, you know, a foretell. I have all the heat turned off in all the greenhouses, but mm-hmm. I have a roof that harbors a little heat. The soil holds heat, you know, so if you get that one cold night and you have gone ahead and put the tomato or the pepper in, you know, you get that one cold night, maybe just a wet newspaper or, right. you know, just a just a, an old sheet, something to keep. If you do get a touch of frost, it'll keep from tip burning, you know, getting that brown or black tips and edge mm-hmm. to the to the leaf where it can't support that temperature. But that, uh, you know, I don't. I don't want to be the one where you come back in two weeks and say you said it was okay because I, I, I can tell you how to grow it, but I can't. I can't control Mother Nature. Usually, we say it's safe after Memorial Day, but it really looks pretty darn good. Yeah. Here. What I'm hoping is is the whole. Um, I, I don't know if it would be weather karma or whatever. We took our licks in April, and hopefully May is uh, mm-hmm. is giving us our due. Get our payback. So it it looks pretty good. Um, you know, I think if I had a garden open tilled and ready, which you know I I just don't yet. <laughs> I have I don't have time to take care of our you know our area when right stocking the bench. But um, it is it is looking pretty good, um, and, I, and I think with this week it's going to bring the soil temperatures up. Uh, I have a lot of water gardeners coming in saying, "Yeah, I want to put my water hyacinths in," but yet their water is still you know fifty eight, sixty two. Right. Um, so, but it, it looks like it looks like we're well on our way here. Well, I wanted to ask you this thing because not only do you know about growing things, but obviously you know the product lines and what's out there better than the average person by far. 
And when people are thinking, especially about ornamentals and stuff in their lawns, they tend to get in this narrow category of, well, I want this and I want this and everybody uses this. There are products out there and plants out there that are really special and kind of innovative or look different that people should – they don't try them because they don't know about them, I think. You know, you're absolutely correct. And I, I have teased people that the plant industry is such a large – international phenomenon that a lot of people don't even realize from our mm-hmm. our material when i when i went and spent um two weeks in germany they have material in europe that has patents only over there that they have no they they we cannot get rights in the united states to sell interesting so when i was over there in germany i'm like oh wow i gotta get that there is a what lack of a better a shade loving tuberous style double begonia mm-hmm. that we are wildly after here that's a nice shade plant that's fragrant. They don't have a fragrance. They, they don't have a fragrance, period. And when I was over there, they have one. They're like, oh, yeah, that, smell, that one smells like roses. But it's a license that's European only. Wow. So just to start the topic of where you're going with this, yes. there is plants over there that, that we don't even have over here. So, so people will you know look at Pinterest and things and be like, oh, I want that. And some things aren't even it, – it's hard for us to believe that we're the United States. We have everything. And there yeah. is a l- large – Network, a mecca of genetics and and uh, you know when I say genetics, I feel a lot of times it has like a negative connotation, right. like like you know everybody's fearful of of this this acronym GMO and it, mm. genetics have been going on for decades and decades, hundreds of years, sure. even in Mother Nature when we haven't been involved. So Mother Nature's always kind of adapted and evolved. So if they, for instance, grow a, a forsythia and they grow twenty thousand forsythia in a field and maybe. 50 of them are kind of a little different. Mm -hmm. They just on their own kind of had a little bit of a different trait. That's how you get Josh and Alan. Sure. They they have just a little bit of, you know, just a little bit of a different trait. Just to tick off. (laughs) Some like it, some don't. But you take that that sport or that that little odd um, a phenomenon in the genetic of just reproduction in general, right? And they'll kind of pull those ten out and kind of work with that, and all of a sudden come up with something that they, you know, a lot of times nowadays it's branded and marketed, and you, you'll mm-hmm. learn about it. But there's forsythia out there right now that, uh, to be totally honest, is so no, I don't even remember the name, but it's very wow. very tidy, elbows in, very compact. It's you know for your foundation planting the old fashioned forsythia. Would just it, it's just a very vigorous, right. weedy, quick growing that you'd use to fill an area in, mm-hmm. you know. And in, in lieu of this newer cultivar, you'd have to hack away at it to keep it nice and right. dense. You can even hedge row it if you want and shear it. But now there's ones that stay nice and tidy. Mm-hmm. There are hydrangeas that rebloom. There are encore evergreen azaleas that rebloom. Mm. Um, there are there are some roses even out there that have become wildly resistant to the point that they're they're almost no maintenance. Which back in the day when I was a kid, oh my I, gosh. I would roll my eyes at at the rose gardeners because I'm like, who signs up for this much maintenance? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of my mother out there with the you know with the rose clippers every day mm-hmm. babying these flowers and and powdery mildew and black spot and, yeah and you know aphid prone and everything now there's roses that are just very resilient and very um you, you know disease tolerant and it just just not a problem wow. here's here's one that's just about to hit the bench for us that i started as just a sampling to test the market and see mm-hmm. is anyone in eerie interested in this plant and it's a sunflower everybody looks for pot crop sunflowers mm-hmm. just like gift set it on you know your windowsill they're very short-lived they they don't you know that they, they will rebloom a little bit and then they're done yeah so generally sunflower is not continuously blooming like most of your annuals now sunfinity is a cross between some of the the uh, cut flower industry sunflowers that they use to, to, to send to the floral mm-hmm. industry and mm-hmm. and some of the more desirable pot crop, more compact, tidy varieties. They've put those two together. Now they have a more compact, re-blooming, all summer long sunflower called wow. Sunfinity. So the reason I only tested the market when we first started this, I think three years ago, this is our third year we've been growing it, is it's wildly expensive. Like I, I shudder to even tell the general public how much the seed is when sunflower seed generally comes for like ninety nine cents in right. bird food. Right. You know, it's normally just a really it's it's very prolific grower. Like one sunflower in the field can grow you know three hundred seeds. Sure. So this sunflower they put so much energy and so much um, time and labor 
laboratory and work into it that it is like 75 cents a seed. Mm -hmm. So you don't get 100% germination. So you're talking about like the input cost just to get a seed to germinate is over a dollar just to start. That doesn't count right. the care, the you know transplanting, the, the, you know, the, the pinching and, and developing it. So Sunfinity is a branded sunflower mm -hmm. that I tested. So when it hits the market, when it's all said and done, it's like a $15 sunflower, which is kind of unheard of. There's but shoot. you get such a better payoff. Oh, but they go you know, the awesome longevity and long. And, if you yeah. deadhead them, they branch at the at the cut. So if you actually cut them back and, and you know, where it's put it three, four blooms out, mm -hmm. give them a little snip, it puts five, six, seven blooms below that. Cut them, it gives another one. You yeah. can almost make a sunflower bush by the end of the year. Yeah. So because April was so dark and cool, uh, that crop's eh, maybe a week behind. They're mm. coming into their own. They're just starting to set bud. They're going to hit the bench here uh, appropriately timed, the latter part of May. And you know we went from growing just a sampling amount because I didn't want to put thousands into seed if no one was interested in a $15 sunflower. And the return business, because the people that planted them got what they paid for. Mm -hmm. They come exactly. back. Going, like, I want that Sunfinity. It's awesome. I put some in my own garden to trial it when we first did it because we like to sample some of the new stuff. And some of it, I'll honestly, I'll tell you, like, hey, we had that. We don't have it anymore because I personally thought it was horrible. It didn't right. do what it li – it didn't live up to its hype. Right. Sunfinity does. It totally yeah. – it, it blows me away at the hype. And it's a sunflower. And that's the kind of thing that – you must have had some skepticism from people like, oh, come on, man. I, you know, Sunflower, you're, you're talking about it's glorious for this little short period of time. You know, I kind of tease that a lot of times a lot of folks won't look from the flower down. They they they, they yeah. look at what it was, and it, it really, the first crop we did was really nice. It was attractive. It was pinched and, and mm -hmm. pruned well so that when it hit the bench, it was this nice little compact kind of branched out sunflower. And everybody was like, whew, that's a, an expensive sunflower. And when you read the sign or the staff got to chat with someone and said, hey, this this thing keeps putting out like blooms you can cut and put in mm -hmm. a vase all summer till freeze. They were like, really? Yeah. Like, that's not the norm for a sunflower. And then the folks kept telling their friends, like, what is that? Mm -hmm. That's exactly how I learned about it. It was in a trial garden before it was launched to the general public. And when we got off the bus for the, this tour that I was doing, I, the first thing I said, because I'm a, I'm a plant nerd. I, I, I What is what is that? Is that some sort of sure. new Black Eyed Susan? Like what? Uh, and they kind of got this grin. And they're like, no, that's a trial bed for Sunfinity. Ah. So I'm writing it literally on my hand. I'm like, Sunfinity, what is that? And that is a, it, it's a seed-driven sunflower that now has set the world on fire in the sunflower market. There's nothing else like it. Yeah. Nothing even close to it, even on the cusp that I'm aware of. Uh, Dianthus, they, they've come out with a couple of Dianthus in the last few years that bloom through the heat. Mm -hmm. they, uh, Jolt, it is a awesome Dianthus that typically doesn't eat, doesn't like heat or grow through mm -hmm. the heat. This dianthus doesn't bloom until it's hot. So they've they've continuously worked on certain things. Like back when Sun Patience originally started, mm -hmm. I turned my nose up at them because they really weren't very good bloomers. They didn't have very good habit. They were a kind of a in the box store kind of flash in the pan. Mm -hmm. I kind of thought, eh, I'm not totally sold on this this plant. Well, then over the next three years, they worked on the genetics to get them better blooming, better branching, and they divided up some of the plant into two or three different series, one mm -hmm. called compact, one called vigorous, when they actually worked out that genetics so that they knew that they had in discrepancies within the plant and they series them to two separate ones so you can get the one that would literally go get your mail or the one that will stay tidy right. in your window box right. they separated it branded it as compact and vigorous um we separated how we grow them six packs and the small ones large pots mm -hmm. and the big ones and now it, it, i can't imagine not having some patience we almost can't grow enough for right. the for the next year's trend to keep up with it so it's constantly evolving i started this conversation by saying i tease people that the cell phone industry and what they try to come up with and have the next greatest telephone or, or uh, camera, the next mm -hmm. greatest this, that, or the other thing, video and everything. The cell phone industry has nothing on the yeah. green good industry. They are tripping over one another, slapping each other around with company to company, trying to come up the next greatest, latest thing. So our industry is, has a wealth of development. Yeah, and what I'm saying, too, is that as a consumer, you do yourself a disservice if you go, this is what I'm familiar with, this is what I like. It, it, you know, yeah, okay, yeah. have that, but also look at this other stuff and think about it. The negatives have 
kind of been branded in there too. Like Downey Mildew in Waller and I, the sea driven impatient was a problem for almost a decade. Mm-hmm. Well, if you don't know, I'm here to scream to the hills that the Netherlands shared a secret with us genetically and they instilled um, uh, resistance in the new um, mm-hmm. Amara and Beacon series of sea driven impatience, which is almost the entire crop we grow. And they are exempt, like I'm going to say one of them, 98 percent free yeah. of downy mildew issues. So I got a lot of people come in and say, oh, I'll never grow impatience again. But that's a thing gone by. Well, they look the same to me, but they're not. What's, <laughs> exactly. what's in the inside is not what is, you know appears to be. So impatience took a big dip like our stock market right now, and they crashed because everybody was afraid of the disease. Right. It was an issue. It was out there. Call it a pandemic of impatience. And now the resistance shared by the folks in Netherlands who have a huge green industry. Sure. And large mecca of of um, genetics and genealogy there uh, shared that with some of our breeders and I'm sure there was money involved and now the Amara and uh, XDR it's called mm-hmm. Amara XDR is extra disease resistant uh, and mm-hmm. the Beacon series that is uh, designed by Ball which is our biggest supplier of green industries um, has has you can go right back to the impatient so there's the negative comes back as as well okay. so the innovation his it's, it's rampant. It All right. really is. Let's jump on the phones. You're on with Josh. Good morning. Good morning, you two. Great conversation today. And Thank you, sir. Brought my attention to the fact that uh, when do you, will you have your son and patients ready to be purchased? Or two brought? weeks ago. Well, two weeks ago. Two okay, weeks so ago. You have them now. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I'm one of those that love those son and patients, and I use them for border as well as pots like that. For any pots, too, they make out. My wife likes to see them put in there. Uh, you've talked about sunflowers, the uh, sunflowers, the seeds on sunflowers. Uh, are there big, the, the sunflowers large enough to use the seeds? Because I love eating sunflower seeds, and they always you know, come out well. If you're talking about uh, Sunfinity, no. Sunfinity is not a seed-producing edible type of sunflower. It's going to be just for your ornamental color Desire. It's okay. not going to be the large style. It's going to be a cut flower style, which is generally, I guess, for lack of a better explanation, we'll, we'll call it seedless and sterile. Okay. The other thing, I have a question because it was brought up to me as uh, a question. Uh, lately, woodchucks are coming out of the ground, you know, location, checking out the garden to see, I guess, what's being uh, produced for them. It, I heard one time if you bred your, like, a human hair, Around an area that kind of de- dis- uh, discourages certain rodents, like the woodchuck, maybe from trying to invade your garden. Is that one of the, Do you know if there's anything more to that or not? You know, I've heard a lot of people lately using bounce sheets for everything. Someone told me even um, uh, in their classic cars, in their snowmobile hoods, to stop rodents of all kinds that bounce sheets mm. have been very effective in lieu of the old-fashioned semi-toxic uh, uh, mothballs, right. you know, which which are kind of harmful to certain. And don't smell good. And don't sm- Oh, they smell horrible. Um, so bounce sheets, uh, I've heard, are, are very effective against everything. Uh, that being said, I'm going to give give my disclaimer to the fact that well, there's a disclaimer at the beginning of the show so i can say whatever i want <laughs> you can, right? you're free um, now. that i don't know if there's anything truly honestly that will completely reliably definitely stop a woodchuck if they're hungry that's um they're, they're I, I have literally seen with my own eyes woodchucks chew um uh, chicken wire to get into yeah. somewhere that they want something. Yeah. So my great uncle used to spray cayenne pepper and that would teach the rabbits over a period of about two weeks. I would teach the rabbits that were living in that area that that was too hot to eat and they would literally stay away after that. So you could stop spraying the pepper. So I don't know if, you know, the hot, hot cayenne pepper sprayed on plants will stop. Um, human hair. I mean, anything that you can do to stop them. Uh, you know, odor is very, very effective with, um, uh, with rodents because their sense of smell is so much better than ours. But, you know, that's where some of the products that hit the market that are in the biological organic side were like coyote urine and things like that that have very uh, high flag for um, rodents to, you know, run away. They, they, they get nervous. So I, I bounce sheets, human hair, soap. I've heard soap. Um, use them all. <laughs> yeah, right. If you can exactly. stop them, good for you. What about the 
marigold did I do work against rodents or did I know they helped uh, deter certain insects from Yeah, um, that's a really good point because there's two two families of marigolds and when you find them on the bench usually east and west usually you'll find the marigolds separated by their origin and what i mean by that is you're going to find the small bloom a little bit more compact shorter marigold it's called the french marigold that's what you use for deterrence a lot of times they'll they'll border areas that are high bug mm-hmm. areas or or, or um, pest and and grazers if you will and then the other one does not have the same effect they're generally taller they don't seem to deter as well they don't have the same kind of pungent odor although they still smell like a marigold they're not as aggressive as the french that's the african marigold that's the pom-pom style the more upright the taller background flower Mm -hmm. Um, that's generally not the one you want to use for deterrence on our bench there are two completely separate displays of 300 flats of pom-pom style african and small bonanza janey uh hot pack they'll call Mm -hmm. them all those varieties are french you want to use that for deterrence the other thing is probably you might need to try to find i don't think you sell them anymore at all the carrion flower to keep your neighbors from invading your garden. No, if you want anything that smells that that smells similar to that, you just go to the nursery office and go to the boots and gloves area of that office, and it smells like carrion. Okay. <laughs> hey, you guys have a blessed day now. All Thanks, right, you thank do. you, caller. You too. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I guess that's the, sort of my, my little message today is... You have a little message? I have a little message. And that is when you are, you know, doing this stuff, you're getting your, your property set up and the warm weather's here and everybody's, you know, gung-ho to do it. Use a little imagination. When we started doing this show together years ago, I remember one of the first things we talked about was the pawpaw plant, the edible pawpaw plant. Oh, yeah, plant, I remember which people that. Have, and I have brought that up to people in the years past... Nobody knows about it still. Native Pennsylvania custard fruit. That's right. Vanilla custard in a pear-like natural fruit that grows in semi-shady natural areas in the wild. And it's native, so you don't have to be like, well, it's not going to do well here. No, it's from here. It is from here. And if you really know your plants, like sometimes I do this to my wife. I'll be like, ooh, and I'll just eat something off a plant in the woods. And then, (laughs) what are you doing? I said, oh, that's a pawpaw. So we were, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm pretty sure we were in Chicago, and there was this um, this arboretum area, and the arboretum had a little sliver that went off the beaten path from the main traveled area mm-hmm. that was down an area um, next to train tracks. And I don't know if she'll even remember this, but we're, we're walking down this train track, and you can tell it's an area that it's just kind of like a sample garden of fruits and vegetables that wasn't high trafficked it wasn't right. it wasn't some of the glorious planted beds it was kind of tapering away to the edge of the arboretum and we got to this group of trees now it's very common for pawpaws and i'll tell you why pawpaws generally need each other because there are male and females to okay. make it, i'm not going to use a bunch right. of crazy vocabulary but there's male and females in there so you'll find them growing kind of in colony and they mm-hmm. seed very easily in the wild if the if the environment is proper so they're usually among sibling clearings or edges mm-hmm. where they get dappled sun but a little bit of break and they'll find them in patches or groves together because they seed and that's what makes them prolific because one will you know be a male and the other will be a female and now because we've talked about innovation there is papas on the market commercially that are more both i I believe it's dioecious or right what the term that produce fruit on its own on its own but generally in the wild, there was male and female that produced fruit. So in this little area that we walked down to this kind of off obscure area uh, next to the train tracks, there's this group of random trees that almost kind of looks like Papa should, kind of untended. Mm-hmm. So I grabbed one off the tree. You know, probably not socially acceptable, but there's a whole bunch of them. And just start gnawing on this random fruit that my wife has never seen before in her life. And she's like, oh, my god what are you doing i the, said oh try this she's like not in knows. a million years <laughs> the man i'm like knows. look at it. and if you truly know pop on you look at it it, it, it looks, looks like a when funky. a banana ro- goes bad right it does but it doesn't taste like that it's phenomenal okay. it's kind of vanilla custardy you know and she's like y- you're unbelievable well you're just i'm random well we're out of time so while we're in the club of guys whose wives think we're nuts uh <laughs> nuts uh nuts uh <laughs> Nuts. Uh... <laughs>